Originally announced way back in 2017, Tunic is finally out on Xbox and PC, and it's shadow dropped into Game Pass for both as well. How does this Zelda meets Dark Souls mishmash of cuteness fare? I found it to be incredible. At first. Roughly halfway through my playtime though, a few mechanics were introduced that soured me quite a bit. What never changed though, was the exquisite world building and intriguing lore, which may be enough for you to plod through the, at times, abysmal combat. Though it became a bit of a chore for me by the end, I think there is still enough here to make this one worth checking out. Allow me to explain why in the Xbox Era Review of Tunic. Tunic is an absolutely gorgeous game, and features some of the most inventive level designs I've ever seen. The music is wonderful, and early on, the combat is quite enjoyable. Things start out rather basic. You find a stick, and you can hit enemies with it after assigning it to a face button. A though is always your trusty dodge, and slowly but surely you power up your furry fighter into a furious fox full of fantastical fortitude. The name of this game is Exploration. You will need to search every nook and cranny to figure out just what the hell is going on, how anything works, and where you should go. Aiding you in this task is perhaps the best and most important feature in the game, the manual. A press of the view button brings up the beautiful and 100% necessary to read through game guide. Featuring hand-drawn art and a killer style, this book is full of vital information about the game that you can't learn any other way. You don't have it at first, but you slowly find pieces of the manual littered throughout the game world as floating white icons. It seems key to find all of them based on the lore I could barely understand as this game features a lot of unintelligible text, which I'm sure linguists have or will already crack very soon. This is an obtuse game, but differently than Dark Souls. With a bit of patience, you can figure out what your goals are and where to go rather easily. One thing to mention though is you want to find the shield as quickly as possible because the game becomes extremely difficult without it. Also, make sure to read the manual as it teaches you how to upgrade your furry fighter, which I hadn't done for the first eight hours of my playthrough, which made things ultra hard mode for absolutely no reason. My main issue came as I progressed through the game and was met with the poison mechanic. This lovely thing reduces the entirety of your health bar if you are too close to a corrupted energy source or hit by something that glows a familiar and horrific pink. The game's health system works much like Dark Souls normally where you can use flasks, of which you gain more of as you play, to restore health. The poison system, however, lowers your entire bar, and you cannot gain back that HP until you visit the, again, Souls-like shrine which resets everything. It permeates throughout the entirety of the second half of the game, and it made everything a complete slog for me. Having respawning enemies on top of it was just a nuisance and not enjoyable, mainly because I didn't find the combat fun by the end. A big reason for that is I feel the balance in Tunic is off. It's not that things are overly hard, it's more that the game bites off more than its controls can chew when it comes to how the enemies behave. You must be extremely deliberate, but you are also limited by an unforgiving stamina system. Far too often, the game's lock-on system was more of a hindrance than a benefit as well. Once you've found your shield though, the right trigger is your guard on hold and parry on press. Nothing in this game is snappy control-wise though, and the parry is a full second load up and swing. Throwing bombs feels sloppy and overly animated, and the basics of swinging your sword never seemed to change the entire playthrough for me. Overall, it's a mediocre system that I hoped would grow to meet the ever more challenging enemies, but it failed to do so. My impressions of the combat after 5 or 6 hours would have been passable, but after my 14 hour playthrough, I found it to be outright bad. A game that came out last year and played similarly is Death's Door. But what that game had was a proper balance so that while it was difficult, I didn't feel cheated. Far too often with certain mobs in this game, both my and their hitboxes felt off, or 
their attacks were too magnetized, so even if I was blocking or felt like I had dodged properly, I could not avoid taking damage. It is unfortunate, as the lore and world building in Tunic is fantastic. The whole game was let down for me by how often I felt I was only pushing ahead through repetitive enemy encounters because of that story. I just didn't like playing the meat of the game. One thing that can alleviate this issue for those willing to use it are the accessibility features. You can both make yourself invincible and or give yourself unlimited stamina. For many playing the game, I'd say just feel free to use these if you start feeling frustrated as I did with the lack of checkpoints necessitating repeating the same enemy encounters multiple times. On to the really good stuff though. The world here is one of the better I've ever played through. Numerous hidden paths, oodles of secrets, and intriguing lore abounds. It is the main reason I kept pushing through the more frustrating parts, and I can see and have already seen communities being built up around learning the secrets of this game. Even after defeating the end boss, there were multiple areas I had never been able to go to, and the idea of a new game plus where I try to find every secret I can, using invincibility if necessary to keep my anger levels down, is something I could easily find myself doing in the future. As the title is available day one on Game Pass, I hope that people know what they're in for here. It's never easy, and the story is never clear. The use of a native in-game text mixed with one of the many localized languages is both interesting and at times frustrating. Graphically though, things are stunning with beautiful models, incredible lighting, and solid animations. The diversity on both enemy types and level biomes is solid as well. The music matches it step for step with the initial starting area having a great soundtrack that keeps up through your entire playthrough. I did run into a few bugs with getting stuck in the environment. Dodges worked me out of most, but a couple did require me to exit to the title and come back in. In conclusion, Tunic is both incredible and incredibly frustrating as a title. The combat lets down what otherwise is a masterpiece. If you can look past it or feel fine using the accessibility options, it is absolutely worth checking out. You'll be met with gorgeous graphics, incredible music, and intriguing lore that just may be enough to carry you through. And being available day one on Game Pass for console and PC certainly doesn't hurt either. As always, thank you so much for watching. You can like, comment, and subscribe if you want to help us out. And you can also visit us at patreon.com forward slash Xbox era if you really want to help. We'll see you next time.